single itself, it's pretty big contrast from the previous single called Temptation. I was not worried, but I was wondering how people would, how they would perceive it, because it was the first heavy track that we released in more than two years. And uh, it got really, really good response. It was fantastic to see, and it was just so overwhelming, really, that people were so astonished that we were finally back with sort of a bit of a new sound. Writing Heaven and Hiding uh, together with Harold was started out like any other uh, song and I, I can't even remember how the first prototype sounded. There was nothing spectacular about it. I remember at the end of the day when Harold had left and I started working on this bridge for the song, which was this kind of intro to the, to the track as it sounds now. And, um, made an upload, then Harold called me up and was like, man, this is how the song should be. This is what the song uh, should sound like. So we completely scrapped the first idea we had and wrote a song solely based on that part. And it was just so natural. Like I, we really felt like we found something special. And to me, this track is definitely one of the best songs we've ever written in a way that is so different from, from what we've done before, but still having that imminence sound to it. Heaven in Hiding is not so genre specific, in my opinion. I think it's a bit more hard to label it as a, as a metalcore song or, or a rock song or a, whatever you want to call it. So I didn't really know what to expect when we when we put it out, but I was very pleasantly surprised, and it was quite amazing to see that people really seemed to to enjoy it, even though it was so different from the one we released before. So we shot Heavenly Hiding together with Temptation over the course of like one long week, five or six days of shooting. And it was actually a pretty tough challenge because we had to combine uh, first day of shooting Temptation, the next day shooting Heaven in Hiding, then going back to Temptation again, and then again to Heaven in Hiding. So I had to keep it all in my head, really structured, that we don't lose the, the line of the story over the two different videos. And I think it was actually a pretty tough challenge for Eddie as well, because he had to kind of transfer from one emotion to another, from one story to another, but I think he managed it really well. In many ways, I would say that uh, Heaven and Hiding, the video shoot, was pretty challenging, because we were mostly outside, you know, it was pretty cold, it was middle of the winter. And I must say it was pretty impressive to see Eddie holding it together all the time. Uh, it was a lot of takes, a lot of shots outside and also in the darkness and a lot of physically demanding stuff that he had to go through. Um, but he pulled it off really well and uh, he didn't really complain even once. So we shot Heaven and Hiding for three days in total. And the most challenging day um, was where we did all the cabin scenes and we had a lot of outdoor shots including the church um, at the same day as well and uh, we had been shooting for almost 12 hours uh, when we were approaching the end of the video the final scene with the levitation and they had uh, organized this harness that I would be wearing with the wire um, up in the roof and there was a few guys standing there and holding it to support my weight and it actually happened at the one of the final shots when we were almost completely done the harness broke and I fell from about one and a half meter down into the floor and hit my head really bad and everyone was quite shook and you could hear like this there were like four, four, 40 people in this little cabin and everyone was just went completely silent. Um, they were pretty worried that I got a concussion first, but uh, luckily nothing bad happened. And, uh, it was all worth it in the end, I guess. So when we arrived at the cabin, first of all, we got stuck in the snow, which was pretty worrying actually, considering the fact that we were in the middle of nowhere, somewhere deep, far out in the Latvian forest. 
but we managed to get out. But at the actual cabin, it was really nothing, nothing, no decorations, no interior design or anything. Uh, everything that you see in the video was really built on spot. It was a fantastic team and I, I think Pavel did such a fantastic job this time again to really build that cinematic setting that we had been visualizing when we wrote the, the, the story concept. Just like the week before we arrived to Latvia, it was really, really cold and almost like a snowstorm. And uh, when we started shooting, uh, everything started to melt a bit more and more. And we got a little bit worried because that would, that's exactly what we had in mind for the video. And when you see the shot at the lake with the skeleton of a bridge, uh, it's a beautiful picture. And I remember walking out onto the ice and there was already starting to fill up with water from the sea. And we, we did a couple of shots and then I had to walk back again and then walk out again. And each time that I walked out, I recognized that the water level was increasingly rising for every time. And I had Pavel on, uh, on my phone in my pocket so we could communicate uh, from a distance. I remember yelling to him like, we have to cut now because now the, the ice was starting to break around me. I can hear these cracks uh, in the surface. Uh, but we got the shots that we needed and uh, I think it turned out really beautifully. I think one of my favorite scenes in the video, which was, wasn't actually planned at all in the beginning, is the light drone. Because at first we just wanted to have like one or two shots of the drone flying over the cabin that Eddie was in. But then we actually tried it and we thought, oh my god, this looks amazing. And the guy, the light drone guy just said, okay, I have uh, four batteries, each battery lasts five minutes. And we decided, okay, let's do it. Let's do Eddie performance on the empty beach. And then we had this big giant flying machine with the light. And I think this made the video a little bit more special. The original idea with Heaven in Hiding was uh, that it would not include only a storyline. We filmed the band performance also. Um, but when we saw the result of Eddie's performance and, and how the story was portrayed throughout the video, we kind of felt that it wasn't necessary to add anything else in it. It was more important to focus on, uh, on the actual story and the concept of the video. I think that the video for Heavy in Hiding paints a beautiful picture of the inside of a, a broken person um, who is constantly searching for a purpose or meaning in their life um, without any any sort of success. Still forgetting that you always need to, to start looking inwards instead of outwards in order to find, find some sort of content with yourself. There are some people who think that I'm still very heavily involved in Imanoza's music videos when it comes to directing uh, because that is something we did for a long time in the, in the beginning of the, the band's career that I had to direct and edit and um, make the videos myself but since 2018 we started to work with Pavel together uh, because I wanted to take a step back and focus more on being in front of the camera and on my part as a as a band member. But we're still very heavily involved in in the concepts of the videos. Um, we're writing the stories together, going back and forth and, and trying to find a, a bigger visual concept that can kind of symbolize the song and capture the essence. Also our our graphic designer Jacob Koch has been very heavily involved in in these songs and videos in the way of writing up the mood boards and, uh, and getting the, the ball rolling on, on the image of, of what the song represents. Another thing worth mentioning is the work of VFX artists, the 3D artists and 
the cleanup artist because for example Eddie was wearing this harness during the levitation and since we're so late and so short on time we had to shoot it like handheld with the light flickering and Eddie was shaking and it was actually pretty hard to clean it up afterwards but we managed to do it in the end. The cleanup guy really did his job well. What I really loved about this one, especially you know Heaven in Hiding, was that it accumulates with the song itself. Um, and that's something I don't see happening very often uh, in, in a lot of music video productions. And I'm really happy that we were able to do that in, in, a, in my opinion, a pretty good way. Because there is, a, there is a bigger thought of what the ending of the song actually means and why it's written in this way. To me, I think it just became a little bit clearer of what we wanted to achieve when the video got finished. As many of you have probably figured out, the stories of temptation and having and hiding are in fact connected, but we can't really go into more detail um, at this moment, but we can tell you that it's part of a larger concept and that more is to come. <laughs>